I'm Fantasma Fawn. Before anything else, I do want to acknowledge my new hair because I love it and I love it. My seasonal job just finished, which means I am finally allowed to dye my hair again. So I did it literally the day after my job ended. I went out and I got all the hair dye and I did my hair. It's not super even in the back because I did it myself, but it's still... You can still see that good rainbow. It makes me really happy. I was originally gonna dye the top part pink, but when I saw the highlighter yellow, I I needed it. I think yellow is the only color I hadn't already dyed my hair, so it's good to have the full spectrum. But getting into the topic of this video, today I went to Target. It is November 1st, the day after Halloween to scope out their after Halloween clearance because that's how you do. And I was looking for one thing in particular. I was looking for wigs. I think Halloween wig quality has been going up just a bit. So I got two wigs. One is what I kind of consider to be higher end within the store. None of them are really actually good wigs. And then one um, was pretty lower end. My main goal for this is to see if I can turn these like really cheap, shiny uh, Halloween costume wigs into actual wearable, like good matte wigs. I don't anticipate being able to use these for like an actual serious cosplay, but I thought it would be a fun experiment and they might be good for cause tests or something like that. We'll see. So this is the low end wig that I got. It honestly doesn't even look great in the picture which is how you can tell it's it's not going to be fantastic. It was originally $6, so we are not expecting high quality. You can see in the back it's just, oh, it's shiny. It's so very, very shiny. Um, so there's that one. I don't know if you can tell, but I don't have very high hopes for it. This one I am slightly more hopeful about. It is a Disney branded Ariel wig. This one was originally $10. By the way, these are both uh, 50% off, so I got them for five and three. Um, looking at the back, it doesn't seem to be that shiny. Like, it looks fairly matte. On the surface, it looks like it's good quality, or okay quality. The stock picture looks good. Um, it is for a child head, so we'll see if we can even fit it on my noggin. With this one, I don't think shine is gonna be much of an issue. I think the main problem will probably be thinness because I think that's kind of a staple of Halloween store wigs. So before I do anything with either of them, I am going to try them on as kind of a before thing. Yeah, this feels very thin for how long it is. Right off the bat, not really as long as it looks in the picture, but I didn't really have very high hopes. It does have Ariel's little curl though, which I appreciate. That actually looks kind of nice for like a factory quality smooshed into bag wig. Alrighty, so I am just gonna go ahead and try on the baby size Ariel wig. Okay, I am honestly pretty gosh dang impressed with this Ariel wig. I'm gonna zoom in a little so you can see the details. It's pretty decently thick. Like, I think the curl adds a lot of the volume, but it's still not, like, laughably thin. It brushes nicely. You don't get that horrible, horrible, like, crunchy plastic sound when you try to brush a bad wig. And it's not even terribly shiny. Like, I don't have the highest standards. I only have a couple of wigs that aren't from Amazon or eBay. Like, I have one Arda wig, and then one wig is fashion wig. But I'm honestly kind of impressed with this costume wig. Like, it's, it's definitely, I don't know, bushier than I might like. Like, it doesn't taper very well. It's very big at the bottom, but it would only take a little bit of styling to kind of get that under control. I highly, highly doubt that this is heat resistant because it was uh, $10 and I don't think, yeah, it doesn't say anywhere on the package that it is, which probably means it is not. Surprisingly enough, the child size net is not hurting my head at all. It seems to fit fairly well. If I like pull it apart with my hands, I can find the net but it's not really something that you'll see unless you try to style the wig. I definitely, definitely wouldn't use this for styling. I don't think it would like 
hold up to anything beyond just um, being worn down because wigs tend to show their net a lot more when they are in, like up in any way, really. They're made to be down. Now we're gonna try the $6 wig that didn't, that didn't, didn't even look good on the, on the stock picture. So we'll, we're gonna see how that goes. All right, and here it is. Here is that shiny, shiny nightmare. Oh boy. Oh boy, are you guys ready? This isn't a good time. I don't like this. I don't even have to zoom for you to see how gross this is, but I'm gonna do it anyway. This is just, oof. It's shine, it's shine, it's, it's shine, it's shine. The only good thing I can really say about this wig is that the netting doesn't show immediately. You do still have to dig it out like with the other wig but it is also a lot thinner than the other wig is. Like you can see, that's how much hair you're getting. I honestly don't even like looking in my viewfinder with this. I'm gonna braid it and see if that helps. And we're already getting, getting very tangly here. I feel like that might be a pervasive issue with this one. See, this is the costume wig quality I was used to growing up with. All right, so that helps it a little bit I think there's just there's not as much of a sheer volume of shiny ugliness but I do still look like a stereotypical anime character drawn by someone who has no exposure to anime you know what I'm talking about the camera's not even picking up how fully just awful this is um it is the opposite of the aerial wig you you're putting them next to each other that's ridiculous I'm uh, trying to think of something positive to say. I like the color. The color is nice. That nice electric blue. Okay, I'm gonna take this off so I can take myself seriously once again. Okay, now I'm gonna move on to the main reason I bought these wigs, which is to see how much damage I can undo mostly talking about this one. All right, now that I have lovingly draped both of these wigs on hangers in the shower to prevent mess, I am gonna take a squirt bottle with a mixture of fabric softener and some water, and I am just going to, you know, there we go, there's some actually coming up. I am just going to absolutely soak the wigs in the fabric softener to take out as much of the shine as I can. This one I have faith in, this one we will just have to see what happens. Now after the wig is completely covered in the fabric softener and water mixture, I'm gonna run through it with a comb to make sure they're both completely wet. All right, now that they have both been soaked in the fabric softener and combed through, we are gonna wait for them to dry for 24 hours before continuing. All right, so it is the next day and both of my wigs are completely dry. But as you can see, the fabric softener didn't really do a whole lot to take away the shininess. In fact, I think on the aerial wig, it might have gotten a bit worse. I'm not sure if this is an experience common to everyone because I know a lot of people use just fabric softener to uh, matte their wigs. But for me, it's never really worked. Maybe it's the brand I've used. But yeah, fabric softener is just never really wet, uh, matted wigs in my experience. But I did still need to use it because I need the slight amount of sort of greasiness that it gives the wigs because of the next step, which is what I use to mattify my wigs. We are going to be using baby powder on our wigs. If you have any involvement in the doll customization community, you probably have heard of using baby powder to um, remove the stickiness and glue from dolls' heads. So basically what we're gonna do, first off, you wanna put a towel on the floor so it doesn't get too horribly messy, and then 
you are just going to liberally apply the baby powder and comb it through. I'm not sure how well this is picking up, especially because the yellow light in my bathroom makes everything record a bit weirdly. But this is the side I have combed the baby powder through, and this is the side I haven't done yet. There is already a huge difference. And looking from the top, you can kind of see how thin the wig is. The net is showing even when it's laying completely flat. Okay, we've got both wigs uh, fully washed, fabric softenered, and baby powdered. So now it is time to try them on a second time. So this is the Ariel wig. Um, I'm honestly not noticing a huge difference with it since it was pretty matte to begin with. Um, it smells better now, but that doesn't really have an effect on how it looks. Baby powder does tend to make the wigs look a tiny bit lighter, but as you can see, it's not like pink or anything. It's still very aerial colored. So it didn't really do much for this wig, but this wig wasn't that bad in the first place. It wasn't cosplay quality, but it was a lot better than a lot of party store wigs. Now we are going to try the problem child, the blue wig. Okay, this is where I'm noticing a pretty big improvement. Not only is it much, much less shiny than it was before, the volume is a little less crazy and unmanageable. It was very bushy in the beginning. Despite being thin, I'm not sure how it managed to be both at once. It's obviously still not a great wig, but considering what it started out as, I'm pretty proud of myself. Again, I know I've said this a million times, but I really want to drive home that this is still not a good wig. It's not realistic, it's very obviously fake, and not just because of the color, because of the texture. Um, and like the strands are not similar to human hair, really. But for someone like me, who kind of thrives on non-realistic things anyway, it's not really too bad. And there are a couple more tips I wanted to share with you guys about um, cosplaying with low quality, very shiny wigs. Not so much about what you can do to the wig itself to make it better, but more about photography and how you can minimize the looking badness. The first tip is try to photograph in kind of low and dispersed light if you can, and never ever with flash or indirect sunlight. The harsh light will reflect off of the plastic and it will make the wig look horrible. Obviously you don't want your picture to be too dim, but the less light your wig is exposed to, the less it will reflect back. My next tip is if you're using any kind of photo editing software, you'll want to lower not the brightness, but the exposure, the contrast, and the highlights. Just fiddle with those three settings to try and take as much light off of the wig as possible. My third tip is something I'm doing right now. If it is at all possible with your character, try to get some kind of head covering. It could be a flower crown or a hat or a little, I don't know, anything you can get on your head. Because I have found that the place wigs show their quality the most is at the top where the hairs are planted in. You can see instantly the wig started to look a bit worse. I pointed this out earlier, but you can see the netting pretty much instantly, and that is the quickest way to make your wig look just bad and fake. So try to cover up the top part if that is an option available to you. 
Not everybody has the budget to buy a $40 wig from Arda every time they want to do a new cosplay. Obviously, buying from a trusted cosplay supplier is always going to be better in quality, but there are things you can do to make low quality items work with what you're doing. One last time, I will say they are not perfect by any means, but I'm pretty happy with what I managed to do for these wigs in this video. If you guys have some poor quality or shiny wigs at home, I super duper encourage you to do the baby powder thing. It works wonders and it makes your wig smell really nice. But that is all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you found it helpful. I'm sure there are a million tutorials for mattifying wigs on the internet and mine was probably definitely not the best, but I had fun making it. It was kind of an experiment. I wanted to see how okay-ish I could make these uh, party store wigs look. I am heading to NecoCon this weekend, so the next video I publish will hopefully be a vlog about that. Please leave questions for my cosplay Q&A, and I hope to see you guys before too long. Bye!